Hello students, good morning everyone. So today we are going to discuss the radial probability distribution curves simply called as RPD curves and then shapes of atomic orbitals. So before we enter into the topic, let us be briefly discuss what are the features of quantum mechanical model. So as we know, what is the difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics? Classical mechanics, it's a branch of science which deals the objects in two-dimensional manner only in two-dimensional manner then that is called classical mechanics quantum mechanics means if the branch of science deals the objects in three-dimensional manner three coordinates x y z coordinates then that branch we call it as quantum mechanics now quantum mechanical model they explained what uh, in this quantum mechanical model the scientist Schrodinger's Schrodinger's have given an Schrodinger's wave equation so if you see the Schrodinger's wave equation dou square psi by dou x square plus dou square psi by dou y square plus dou square psi by dou z square plus 8 pi square m by h square into e minus v into psi is equal to 0. This equation we call it as what? Schrodinger's wave equation. So in this equation psi, psi represents what? It is a wave function. Psi is a wave function. Whereas x, y, z, these are the three Cartesian coordinates and m is the mass of electron mass of electron and h is a Planck's constant Planck's constant E is the total energy total energy and V is a potential energy the difference between the total energy to the potential energy this is representing what kinetic energy of the electron so these are the terms we use and this Schrodinger's wave equation completely based upon both wave and particle nature, dual behavior. So this is called what quantum mechanical model, also called wave mechanical model. So in this quantum mechanical model, mainly psi, wave function. So in this Schrodinger's wave equation, they use two mathematical operators. One is Laplacian operator. Laplacian operator. The second one is Hamiltonian operator. Hamiltonian operator. Laplacian operator we represent with del square. So this is the representation of Laplacian operator. And the Hamiltonian operator we represent with H cap. So what is this Laplacian operator? It is nothing but dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square plus dou square by dou z square. This we consider as what? Laplacian operator. If you substitute, so in the place of this, if you substitute del square, then that is called Laplacian operator. Next, H cap, Hamiltonian operator. H cap is nothing but V minus H square by 8 pi square m into dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square plus dou square by dou z square into psi so this is what so this is this is h cap so if we substitute this h cap value and finalize it, this schrodinger's wave in the same equation we can write as h cap psi is equal to e psi this is the primary equation of Schrodinger's wave equation. In this equation, if you substitute H cap value Hamilton operator in this equation, we will finally get this Schrodinger's wave equation. In this, H cap is Hamiltonian operator, psi is a wave function, E is what? Eigenvalues and psi again wave function. So, 
if you calculate the quantized energy levels the are the, the solution of this quantum mechanical model or schrodinger's wave equation this solution this e we call it as what eigen values okay the solution of this schrodinger's wave equation we get some energy levels and the quantized energy levels or energy values we call it as what eigen values and the wave functions corresponding to this eigen values we call it as what wave functions wave functions so if you see the significance of psi and psi square let us see psi simply called wave function significance significance of psi also called wave function the the wave function psi it regards it is regarding the amplitude of wave amplitude of vibration of electron in 3d manner so it regards what amplitude of the wave as we know electrons are moving in the wave form so if they are moving in waves likewise so the height of this wave this height we call it as what amplitude and that amplitude is representing by the by the wave function and then this psi value the psi value can be a positive value negative value or even it can be zero also this psi can be positive value when it can be positive value when the wave function when the wave is above the axis this is a positive and this is negative and the point where it is crossing it is a zero so psi can be a positive value negative value or zero any one can be so always remember psi indicates what amplitude of the vibration of electrons next coming to the psi square size square simply this is called what how you define the size square size square is nothing but as per the electromagnetic radiation as per the electromagnetic radiation the square of the amplitude is what we call it as intensity of the light so square of square of amplitude we call it as what intensity of light according to that the square of the wave function square of the wave function we call it as probability of finding the electrons simply psi square is nothing but the place the area where the probability of finding the electron that is we representing with psi square so it represents probability of finding electrons around the nucleus so what the this probability maximum 90 to 95 percentage so we cannot 100 percent calculate the probability we can calculate 90 to 95 percent maximum we can find out by this size square size square represents what as we know size square the probability of the space around the nucleus where the probability of finding the electron is maximum that is what we call it as atomic orbital so psi square simply we call it as what atomic orbital and one more thing psi can be a positive or negative or zero value but psi square is always be positive for example if psi is a positive positive square means positive if psi is negative negative square means negative into negative positive so it is always be positive value but psi can be a positive negative any one can be so this is a, the significance of psi and psi square if we see the three coordinate cartesian coordinates x y z so in case of wave function in the place of x y z we are taking three other co co uh, other coordinates that is what r theta and pi so psi of r theta and pi so these are the three cartesian coordinates 
we are taking in the place of x y z in the place of x y z we are taking this so if you take this y wave function psi of r theta phi this you can write it as the function of psi of so function of r of r theta of theta and phi of phi so this is what radial function the function of radius called radial function function of theta and function of phi and this function of radius a radius function depends upon two uh, quantum numbers that is n and the l principal quantum number and azimuthal quantum number and uh, theta and phi so this theta is depends upon m and l and this is a uh, depends only on l so depends only on l so overall this you can write it as it is a product of two functions so one is a radius function into the remaining two functions we call it as what angular functions so angular functions a of theta phi so this is what we call it as angular functions radial function depends upon what are the factors what are the quantum numbers n and l whereas angular functions the combination of both they are depending on l and m so finally you can say that the wave function psi of an electron is nothing but the product of two functions one is a radius function another one is what angular function so this is radius function radius function depends upon n and l quantum numbers whereas angular function angular function or angular distribution function depends upon the quantum numbers l and m so now if you see that <coughs> radial probability distribution a radial probability density what exactly radial probability density see if you see that this is a nucleus so this is a nucleus and this is these are the shells first shell second shell so as we know are also called called orbits or orbitals so this is the place this dense this intensity of the light that indicates what probability density probability density means there the probability of finding the electron is maximum so up to 90 to 95 percentage so these are orbits orbits and between the two orbits so here the probability is how much nearly 90 to 95% probability of finding the electrons and between the two orbits there was in a space where the probability of finding the electron is zero this is called nodes so what we call node between the two orbits there was a space where the probability of finding the electron is almost equal to zero so probability is almost equal to zero so that is called what node okay now what is the radial probable probability density radial probability density it is nothing but the square of the square of psi the square of radius function that is r of r the square of r of r at a distance of small r from the nucleus is called what radial probability density so once again square of r of r so simply we can write it as r square r square represents what so 
at a distance of r from the nucleus where the probability of finding the electron is maximum so that is what we call as radial probability density next one radial probability radial probability distribution function distribution function this we represent with the d radial probability distribution function what is radial probability distribution function at a distance of r if you consider so suppose you consider this is the r smaller the uh, radius of this sphere is smaller and the radius of this sphere is dr so what is the total radius of this whole sphere r plus dr so it is sphere whose radius is dr whose radius of dr and volume is dv dv so at that sphere what is the probability of finding the electrons that is what we called as radial probability distribution function the probability of finding the electrons at a sphere at a distance of r from the nucleus and the radius of that smaller sphere is dr with a volume of dv then that is called radial probability distribution function as we know square of the radius function representing what probability of finding the electron at a particular point but here we are we are considering the a sphere of volume dv or the sphere of radius dr so that is we represent with the r square r square means probability of finding the electrons at a particular point into dv r square into dv this is representing what this is representing the probability of finding the electrons at a distance of small r with a with a volume of dv so this is what we called as radial probability distribution function d so that that you can write now dv we need to calculate how to calculate the dv let us see if you take the volume of the sphere volume of the sphere so how to calculate the volume of the sphere volume is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube okay 4 by 3 pi r cube now <clears throat> if you differentiate the volume with respect to r so differentiate differentiate the volume with respect to small r r then how you will write dv by dr is equal to 4 by 3 pi pi so differentiation of r cube dr cube what is the formula 3 r square will come So three into r square. Okay. So differentiation of four by three pi is a constant. That is why we are not doing the uh, differentiation to this constant four by three pi. So d r cube. What is the formula for d x cube? Three x square. Similarly, r cube means three r square will come. Now three three will cancel, and then d v by d r is equal to four pi. R square. Now you bring dr to this side. Dv is equal to 4 pi r square into dr. Okay, this is a dv formula. Now what is radial probability distribution function? D d is equal to r square into dv. So now substitute dv for dv value here. Then radial probability distribution function capital D is nothing but 4 pi r square. Into capital R square into dr. This is representing what radial probability distribution function. Now, what are arquebusic curves? The curves are the graphs which are drawn between radial probability distribution function versus distance from the nucleus. That is R. Those curves we call it as what RPD curves, also called radial probability distribution curves. Now, let us we draw. RPD curves for 1s, 2s, 3s. Similarly, 2p, 3p, 4p. Likewise, for different atomic orbitals, let us we draw RPD curves. RPD curves. RPD curves. So, what are RPD curves? The curves which are drawn between graphs. Drawn between 4 pi r square. 
r square dr versus radius these graphs we call it as what rpd curves now let us we draw first i am taking r r of here r means i told you r stands for radial function and radial function depends upon two quantum numbers n and l so first i am drawing for 1s 1s so r is nothing but psi mu psi of psi is the product of radial function and angular function but our angular function almost be negligible that is why psi is always be equal to radial function so r n l what is the n value for 1s 1 and l value for s orbitals 0 so r 1 comma 0 okay r 1 comma 0 and with a radius r when we draw the graph between r versus small r r versus small r we get the graph like this we get the graph like this so it indicates what it indicates by decreasing the radius by decreasing the radius what happened the probability of finding the electrons increasing increasing so increasing so at the distance r is equal to 0 means nearly at a nucleus at nucleus the probability of finding the electron is maximum when when we draw the graph between r versus small r for 1s similarly if you draw the graph for 2s between r versus small r so what is the nl value for 2s n value is 2 l value is 0 2,0 r versus r we are getting the graph like this we getting the graph like this for 2s okay and when we draw the graph between r versus r for 3s what is the n and l values for 3s 3 comma 0 r 3 comma 0 so the graph will be like this like this so what is this here only one peak here positive value or negative value here positive negative again positive okay so this is the these are the graphs for 1s 2s 3s when when we draw the graphs between capital r versus small r okay now the same 1s 2s 3s graphs i am drawing between r square r square versus r r square versus r now r square as well it's always be positive but r can be negative that is why the graph is going down even in the negatives uh, to the negative axis also it's coming but r square value is always be positive so when you draw it for 1s 1s what is the n value and l value for 1s 1 comma 0 then the graph will be like this likewise same like next for 2s if you draw r square r 2 comma 0 that means it is an 2s for 2s if you draw we are getting like this okay first and then second so how many peaks this is one peak so here one and this is a second two peaks next one when we draw a graph between r square versus r for 3s means 3 comma 0 for 3s orbitals if you draw we are getting 1 2 so total 1 2 3 three peaks will will come so these are the graphs when we draw between r square versus r okay now likewise if you draw it for p subshells let us see r square versus r for for example if i draw it for 2p 2p subshell what are the n and the l values for 2p so n value was 2 and l value for a p subshell is 1 2 comma 1 r square 2 1 so when we draw it so how many peaks will come we are getting the graph like 1s so the 1s graph and the 2p graph both graphs are similar 
So only one peak only will come. For three p, if you draw three p, what is the n and l values? Three comma one. R square three comma one versus R. We are getting. So this graph is similar to two s. Two s and three p both are having the same number of peaks. Here two peaks, there also two peaks. So likewise, three uh, p having two peaks, four p having three peaks. Likewise. Okay. So this is. When when we draw the graph between R square versus R, next uh, what are RPDC curves? The graphs which are drawn between RPDC function versus R that is called RPDC curves. So now if you draw graph between 4 pi R square R square dr, 4 pi R square R square dr versus R. So this is a radial probability distribution function. Uh, the graphs between distribution function versus r this is what we called as radial probability distribution curves now for one s if you draw it is not starting from here so first at nucleus 0 slowly it will increases so this is for one s so how many peaks only one peak for i am writing d d stands for radial probability distribution function for two s So like this, and for three years, one, two, three, likewise. So this is what radial probability distribution curves. So in this curves, you may get the doubt. How many peaks will come? So we have a formulas. How many peaks? See, the number of peaks is always be equal to number of peaks always be equal to. n minus n minus l minus one. Sorry, n minus l, n minus l. See here, what is the one s value? N minus l value? One minus zero, one. Only one peak we got. For two years, n minus l value. Two minus l value for s orbital zero. Two minus zero, two. So we are getting two peaks. And for three years, three minus zero, three. Three peaks we got. Clear. So number of peaks. In RPD curves, is always be equal to n minus l, and the place here, if you see this, between the two peaks, there was a point where the probability of finding the electron is becoming zero, and this point we called as what node, node. So what is a node? The region around the nucleus where the probability of finding the electron is zero. That region we called as node. So here, this point we call it as what? Or these groups of the peaks we call it as what? Nodes. A number of nodes also is always be equal to n minus l minus one. N minus l minus one. So here, how many nodes are there? One. Here, two. Always number of nodes is always be equal to uh, uh, is always one lesser than number of peaks. Here, one peak is there, zero nodes. Here, two peaks with one node. Here three peaks with one node. So likewise, by following these two formulas, you can draw the RPD curves for any orbital. Now let us we draw RPD curves for some other orbitals. So the number of number of peaks in RPD curves is equal to n minus l number of Nodes is equal to n minus l minus what? This is a formula. By using these two formulas, we are going to calculate what? We are going to uh, draw the graphs. So one s, two s, three s already been drawn. Two p, three p, four p. See for two p, if you see, what is the n minus number of peaks? Are how many? Two minus one that is equal to one. Two p is having one. Three p is having. 3 minus 1 that is equal to 2 peaks, and 4 p is having 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 peaks. Okay. Similarly, 3 d, 4 d, 5, 3 d, 4 d, 5, 3 d. If you calculate number of peaks, 3 minus what is the l value for d subset 2? So 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. 4 d, 3, 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. And five d five minus two is equal to three. Okay. Similarly, if we calculate four f, 
5f and 6f. 4f, 4 minus L value for f sub shell 3. 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. And 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. And 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. So from this data, we can conclude that therefore 1s, 1s, 2p, 2p, 1s, 2p, 3d and 4f all are having same number of peaks that is what one peak number of peaks are how many one peak and their rpd curve is like this d versus r we are getting graph like this so 1s 2p 3d 4f all of these orbital subshells are having same uh, graph that is this is that next one 2s 3p 4d and 5f 2s 3p 4d 5f so 2s is having two peaks 3p is having two peaks 4d is having two peaks even 5f is also having two peaks 2s 3p 4d and 5f are having two peaks so the graph is like this okay and 3s 4p 5d and 6f all are having three peaks in their rpd curves three peaks if the number of peaks are one how many nodes zero nodes why because number of nodes is always be one lesser than number of peaks so all of these are having one peak with zero node all these orbitals are having two peaks with one node and all these are having three peaks with two nodes so this is what rpd curves okay now let us we discuss let us we discuss nodes First, let us we move to the shapes of the orbitals. So, as we know, nodes are of two types. One is radial nodes. Radial nodes, also simply we call it as nodes, or say spherical nodes. Radial nodes, also called spherical nodes. Next one, angular nodes. Angular nodes, also we call it as nodal nodes planes nodal planes what are spherical nodes spherical nodes are nothing but this is a region spherical region around the nucleus where the probability of finding the electron is zero those are called what spherical nodes also called radial nodes whereas angular nodes means also called ang nodal planes it is a plane which is passing through the center of the nucleus where the probability of finding the electron is uh, zero that planes we call it as what nodal planes okay even to calculate this spherical nodes or radial uh, angular nodes we have formulas that is number of radial nodes number of radial nodes is always be equal to n minus l minus 1 that is the formula n minus l minus 1 and number of nodal planes nodal planes also we call it as what angular nodes is always be equal to their l value their l values so the total number of nodes so the total number of nodes is equal to the sum of both sum of radial nodes plus angular nodes radial nodes is what n minus l minus 1 plus l minus l plus l cancel that is equal to n minus 1 so for any orbital total number of nodes is equal to n minus 1 out of n minus 1 radial nodes is equal to n minus l minus 1 whereas angular nodes is equal to l so let us we calculate for example if this is a 3d orbital for a 3d orbital or 3d subshell so what are the radial nodes how many of radial nodes and how many of angular nodes are present let us see so first of all radial nodes if we calculate what is the formula n minus l minus 1 that is equal to 3 minus what is the l value for d subshell 2 so 2 minus 1 that is equal to 0 3d is having 0 radial nodes what about the angular nodes angular nodes is always equal to l whose l value is always be 2 so it has total two angular nodes with a zero radial nodes. So likewise, you can calculate nodes for any orbital. For example, now I am giving 4p orbitals. For 4p orbital, how many of radial and angular nodes are present? Radial nodes is equal to 
4 minus for p sub shell 1 l value so 4 minus 1 minus 1 that is equal to 2 radial nodes and uh, angular nodes is equal to l value 1 so total number of nodes is 2 plus 1 so likewise you can calculate nodes for any orbitals now let us we discuss shapes of orbitals shapes of orbitals as we know there was a four different orbitals are there s p d and f orbitals now the first one s orbitals if you take s orbitals see s orbitals are generally they are spherical in shape they are spherical in shape and they are non-directional in nature because of spherical nature they are non-directional nature they won't orient along any axis they are uniform throughout the sphere that is why they are non-directional in nature and by increasing the n value so 1s 2s 3s 4s by increasing the n value what happened their size and energy increases so <clears throat> by increasing increasing n value size and energies of them increases so that we can say 1s less than 2s less than 3s less than 4s okay so by increasing the n value what happens their size and energy increases and uh, the number of so the s orbitals are having they have only radial nodes radial nodes that is always be equal to n minus 1 why because l value for s sub shell is 0 now so that is why n minus l one l minus 1 formula becomes n minus 1 so this is about spherical s orbitals if you draw the structures so this is a nucleus this is 1s this is 2s this is 3s and this is 4s by increasing the n value what happens their sizes increases and the, the spaces between the orbitals we call as nodes okay nodes so this is s orbitals s orbitals are non-directional and spherical in shape next one p orbitals p orbitals if you see p orbitals are generally dumbbell in shape dumbbell shape they are dumbbell shape and whose l values is always be equal to 1 dumbbell means it has two lobes two lobes connected at center the two lobes are connected at center that means the probability of finding the electrons at the center becomes zero why because they are pyramidally they are present they have two lobes and they are directional in nature directional in nature and if l value is equal to one their m values are minus n zero plus n that is why it will be minus 1, 0, plus 1. There was a 3 m values are there. And the corresponding to these 3 m values, there was a 3 orbitals in a p subshell. So, the p orbitals are threefold degenerate. Threefold degenerate. Having 3 p orbitals. 3 p orbitals in a subshell in a subshell so what are those those are px py pz px py pz and their m values are plus or minus 1 plus or minus 1 0 pz orbitals m values always be equal to 0 remaining two orbitals either can be positive or minus 1 plus or minus 1 so this is about uh, uh, the three p orbitals and these three p orbitals are having the same energy so these three p orbitals we call it as what degenerate orbitals these three orbitals we call it as what degenerate orbitals if you see the structures of them this is px This is Py, this is Pz, Px, Py and Pz and each P orbitals are having, there was no radial nodes for this P orbital, they have only angular nodes 
Okay, at nodal planes. What is the nodal planes for Px, Py and Pz? For Px, for Px orbitals, nodal plane is what? Nodal plane for Px orbital, this is Px, this is Py and that is Pz. For Px orbital, nodal plane is Yz plane. Yz plane is the nodal plane. For Py, Zx. For Pz, Xy planes. So these are the nodal planes where the probability of finding the electrons are 0. So this is about the P orbitals. P orbitals are directional. So because of three coordinates, Px, Py, Pz, three P orbitals are present. Next one, D orbitals. D orbitals. D orbitals are generally double dumbbell shape. Double dumbbell shape. There was total four lobes for most of the D orbitals. And uh, if you see the L value for uh, D orbitals, L value was 2. So therefore, their corresponding M values are minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. Total 5 M values. And uh, corresponding to this 5 M value, there is a 5 orbitals, 5 D orbitals. So this is a 5-fold degenerate because of presence of 5 orbitals in a subshell. This is a 5-fold degenerate. And what are those 5 D orbitals? They are dxy, dyz, dzx, dx square minus y square and dz square. The total 5 d orbitals are there. And out of the 5 d orbitals, the first 3 orbitals are present between the axes and the last 2 orbitals are present along the axis. So the orbitals which are present between the axis we call it as what? Eg set of orbitals. Okay, and the orbitals which are present along the axis we call it as what? T2G set of orbitals. Okay, T2G set and EG set. So no need. These are present between the axis. These two are present along the axis. If you see the structures of these 5D orbitals. X axis, Y axis. So this is DXY. This is dyz, this is dzx, so I change the xy coordinates, yz coordinates and this is xz coordinates, dxy, dyz, dzx. Next dx square minus y square, x, y, they are present along the axis. So this is dx square minus y square and at dz square there was a two loops along the z axis and there was a one collar at the center, then collar at the center. So this is dz square. So there is a total 5 d orbitals. Out of 5 d orbitals, the 4 d orbitals are having 4 loops. The last d orbital having only 2 loops along with the uh, collar at the center. See if you see the nodal planes, number of nodal planes is always be equal to L. So what is the L value for D orbitals? 2. So every D orbital is having 2 nodal planes. What is the nodal plane for XY, DXY? That is YZ and ZX. YZ plane and ZX plane, they both are the nodal planes for DXY. Coming to DYZ, for DYZ, ZX, XY. Those are the two planes which are nodal planes for the DYZ. For DZX, xy and yz. These are the two nodal planes for dzx. Coming to dx square y square minus y square here yz plane and zx plane. So same like dxy it is also having dyz plane and uh, yz plane and zx plane. These are the two nodal planes for dx square minus y square. But the fifth d orbital that is a dz square is not having any nodal planes because of presence of collar at the center. Okay so this is about the nodal planes. And M values, if you see, DZ square orbital is always having the M value 0, 0. Remaining DXY, DX square minus Y square, they both are plus or minus 2. Remaining DYZ to DZX, they can be plus or minus 1. So total, D orbitals are 5-fold degenerate orbitals. 
that means they are having 5d orbitals within a same subshell and all 5d orbitals are having the same energy but out of 5 the first 3 dxy dyz dzx are present between the axis whereas the last two orbitals are present along the axis